it all starts with with the energy because if that's empty you can have the best processes the best focus the, the best discipline everything but someone with more energy and more battery cartridges will overtake you the key thing i've identified where people can get it wrong in negotiation is coming into the negotiation having the mindset of it's me versus the agent and vendor rather i always apply the mindset of it's me working with agent, working with the vendor, working with my client. Like we're all working together. The one that I always tell people is terms. Like get your terms right. Like sometimes it's not all about price, it's about terms. Like we bought two properties last week and both of them were, one was a divorce and one was an elderly lady. The divorce needed 30 days, the elderly lady needed like 120 days. We believe every Australian deserves a right to own at the very least five investment properties. I'm Adrian Trimboli. And I'm Frank Ambezi. And welcome to the Invest in You podcast. Mr. Matt Schrammer, welcome. How are you, man? Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. Very, very excited to show our viewers a bit of bit, a bit of bit, or show them who you are and, and explain to them who, the, who you are. But um, what I'm really excited to show everyone is the negotiation side of of, yeah. of you yourself, your business, and and also the fact that you've come from a professional rugby background and how that's translated into now one of Australia's fastest buyers agencies in the Gold Coast. Um, I've done a terrible job of introducing you, mate. So please do the honours. And if you could just quickly introduce yourself, who you are um, and what you do. Yeah, of course, man. Um, first of all, yeah, thank, thanks for having me, mate. I've been following your your journey too and you, you're on a great um, great path. It's been great seeing you, seeing you continually crush it, man. So uh, well done. A um, bit about myself. Look, long story short, um, founder, director of the Strama Group Buyers Agency. We're uh, full end-to-end -end bespoke buyers agency just on the Gold Coast. Generally, that's all we, we buy just on the Gold Coast. Uh, probably a 70-30 split between owner occupiers and investors. So we do help certain investors depending on their price point. And then I guess the business has really come about through my journey as a property investor and my passion for property when I was playing actually professional sport. So mm -hmm. I was a professional athlete in the National Rugby League played for the Gold Coast Titans, uh, seven year career, unfortunately retired through injury, went through the the transition as they call it, and thought I have no idea what I'm doing. I pretty much come out of school into professional sport. Resume was empty and thought, well, I like property, let's get into the property industry. And uh, long story short, yeah, started off in sales, and then uh, yeah, just seen a huge gap on the buying side and the, and the buyer's agency. Side. So we launched back into 2020 and haven't looked back since. So it's been a really, really fun journey. I love it. Awesome. Well, what made you get into property? I know you said you, you were in sales. What what was it about property that you went, okay, I actually want to give this a crack and then obviously into the buyer's agency space as well? Yeah, it was. A, it's funny like life, how it opens up doors, right? And I heard a quote and it really resonates, I feel, with, with not only my life, but a lot of a lot of people, I think. It's like life will always open up doors. It's our job to walk through them and then life will shut the ones we're not meant to continue to walk through. And what I feel is like I had the door open of, you know, playing professional sport and I thought that was going to be my career for the, you know, 10 to 15 years minimum. Unfortunately, that was cut short, so that door closed. But within that journey of playing NRL, I remember there was a distinct moment where I was actually injured. Uh, I, I got injured a fair bit, so I had, ended up retiring through injuries. I had about nine surgeries all up, and I was in one of the X-ray waiting rooms. And remember reading the old Australian Property Investor magazines on the on the uh, the the waitlist bench there. And I actually uh, took it home, which I feel guilty about now. But I actually took it, took it home uh, from Burley Q Scan, and I. And I, just, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I just started reading. I didn't have any. My family were very, you know, tight with, with money. They're immigrants. You know, they came here with nothing. We didn't. We had a pretty poor household in, in the western suburbs of Brizzy. And um, so, yeah, I didn't really have any models 
of investors, but I think that magazine kind of sparked me of what's possible. So I think that's where it all kind of stemmed from. And then, yeah, just started playing footy and obviously was earning a bit more than most 20 year olds and 21 year olds and my friends. So um, instead of blowing it like some of my other teammates, I, I put it towards property. And now reflecting back, really lucky because I think I think I realized like that wage you get as a as a you know professional athlete isn't norm like it, it takes a long time to get them in the real world. You know, you got to have degrees and things like that. Like some of these teenagers now are earning more than doctors. Oh, oh that wasn't me at all. I was I was actually more on the, the minimum wage scale, but still compared to most of my peers, you know, I ha- I had to make sure I was doing something with, with that money because yeah, it's a, it's a very short window of, of opportunity. So, yeah, that's how the property thing came about. I was, I was doing it myself, really. And then, yeah, as I said, I didn't had no job experience. So I, I thought, what's the other thing I know other than sport? It's, it's property. Okay, interesting. So it was the book. And then you decided, so I'm, I'm interested. I want to dive in a little bit deeper to that. So you said that both parents, both parents immigrants, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Dad's from Poland and mum's from the Philippines. Okay. So no property around you. You obviously had the footy boys. Were, were they getting into like what? What kind of reading a book and then going out and I, I, I'd imagine you know you were buying properties and throughout your career. What kind of was it? Was it the, the environment you were in? Was it what was it? Yeah, I, I guess I, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole. I think that's what it was, and I guess that's a key tip for anyone starting the journey: is immerse yourself in in the whatever it is you want to learn. So I'm a big believer, you know, learners are earners. And mm. I just became really interested. YouTube um, podcasts were just starting back then. When I first started, I bought my first property at 21. Uh, nice. Sorry, 20, 24, sorry, 24. Okay. Um, and yeah, there was not really podcast then. So yeah, I'd watch YouTube, read magazines, and that was really it. And it probably took me around a six month before actually taking action uh, on property and then the difference between you know buying an owner off property and then actually buying a property that you don't live in and people rent it rent it off you so uh, that was a that was a really cool concept started learning and then yeah just kept learning and learning by doing and I think that's the big one we can get analysis by paralysis or paralysis by analysis sorry on having too much information and not doing anything with it so I think the key thing that I found was action is first and then you'll learn along the way. I like that. There's a couple of yeah. already cracking quotes you've thrown out. I like it. <laughs> Don't mind a quote. But... Yeah, I like it. I mean, obviously, you you, you 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 know you read quite a bit. You can just tell. But I want to I want to talk about your mindset here because you, you've just said, well, first of all, to, to achieve, you know, playing at a professional level in rugby and now to be running one of Australia's fastest growing buyers agencies and you know probably the biggest on the Gold Coast um something is going right here with with your mindset there's there, there's something there for someone to do it at the, the at, you know at the highest level both in professional well both professional ultimately so I guess talk me through that it's it's kind of a loaded question right but what do you put your success down to in now both avenues and you know under the age of 35, 35. Yeah, mate, I'm thinking I'm 33 now, so I'm perfect. Yeah. Two huge things, and still obviously striving for more and more. But what, what, what is it? What is it? What do you feel that it has led you to success in both of these areas? Yeah, look, I, I, I put it down to what I call, I, I've, I've just identified some things, right? When I was playing footy, you're not aware, and I was only a, a young kid, right, in your 20s mm-hmm. and things like that. The older I got, the the wiser I felt I got, and I still got a lot of growing to do. But I'm starting to actually notice why some people get to somewhere they want to be and some don't. And I, I put it down to a bit of an equation I call a like corporate athlete equation. And I feel there's so much similarity between athletes and and people striving in the corporate world is that the corporate athlete equation is this. I feel it starts firstly with energy. Is number one so what fuels you like what, what you need to get your energy right it all start it's an energy game so what i noticed observation in sport was that 
the best athletes looked after their health. Like they, they were eating right, they were stretching, they were recovering, they slept well, they weren't out partying all night. Um, don't get me wrong, some of my teammates were, were party animals, but <laughs> they were in and out very quickly. But yep. the best who stayed at the top, they worked on their energy. Okay. So, yeah, that it literally that that was the the start of it. I noticed, and then if you think of an equation, then you add focus. So, what I noticed is the best athletes out there all were really focused people. Like they knew what their role was. They avoided distraction when they could. There's a lot of temptations and stuff like that when you are a professional athlete. And and again. Not saying you can't make it without being the shape, but I just noticed the ones who stayed at the top always, they were very, very focused people. So I think that was the next next one. And then stacking on top of that was priority. So you got energy plus focus plus priority. And what I noticed was they focused on the priority of their, their role. So as an athlete, you have so many again, distractions, if you can narrow in your focus on what you need to do and then focus on the priority. So for instance, I had a lot of trouble passing from left to right in my position. Mm -hmm. And I just worked hard on just that, just the priority was if I, I know if I can get that left to right pass humming better than what it was, I'll put myself in a better position, um, you know, to, to make the starting side and ultimately have a career out of this. So if you look at those three things, right, as, as a starter, like energy plus focus plus priority, when you apply that to business, it's exactly the same. I find the mm. best entrepreneurs and, and business owners and even property investors, energy's first. Like they're always, they're quite like, like yourself, I'm, I hope you don't mind, like you like a fit, fit fella. And I see people always at the top, they're, they're fit, they're, they're fit, they're, they, they go to battle, they're, they're, ath- they're corporate athletes. So they look after their health, um, number one, and then they, they know what to focus on. And then which they make it. Sometimes. Hey? I said, which is a struggle sometimes. Yeah. But yes, I, I love where you're going with this. It's excellent. 100%. 100% very, very tough, especially the world now. I think the game, in all honesty, around focus is, it's not being better at focus. It's being better at avoiding distraction. Yes. 100%. Yes. So... That it's as simple as that. And then if you apply that with priority, so, you know, there's busy being busy and then there's busy being productive. I, so, I love this equation, Matt. I love this equation. I want yes. to add one more to it. I'm, I might even steal this. The, the, the one more that I'd add to it is time. Yeah. With, well, with time, you, you just compound all of this stuff. Well, I was, got, I was going to say, that's the, that's, the, that's the top of the equation, right? Yeah, what I've identified, you're exactly right. So... I put that as the top 20%, that equation there. Gotcha. So what I noticed is the top 20% in whatever industry, footy, sport, yep. business, doctor, whatever, all the high performing in the top 20%, I feel they're pretty, they've got that equation down, down pat. But then the crazy thing is that equation equals a result, right? And I feel that the result is being in the top 20%. But to get to the level of, you know, professional sport or get to the level of running a business very successfully, there's different people. There's people in the top 1%, I feel. Mm. And then what I noticed, they take that result, the equation, and then they times it. So this is where it gets crazy, the compound. They they times it firstly with consistency over long periods of time. Yep. Pretty much now to there. I, I believe the best in, in, the, in athletes, I, I noticed... They're just consistent. Like they just literally just keep showing up and not, not over one week. It's, it's, they do, do the same thing for a decade. Yep. yep. Literally. So it's, it's applying. So you got that result and then he times it by consistency. And then the, the crazy one that compounds it all is then he times that by discipline. I love it. I really like With that. that. I feel the times consistency times discipline is where the 1% live. They're nothing special. They're nothing different to you and me. It's just they got a longer time horizon on, on their success. They're willing to do the work for could be a decade or could be 20 years before they, they punch it out. And then they're just disciplined people. Like the, Jocko Willick says, discipline equals freedom. Without mm. discipline, you can't achieve anything. So 
Um, that that's my little corporate athlete equation. I, I found that between sport and business, that's what I've seen. I've noticed the the top do. And as I said, when you ask me where where do I feel, why am I getting success? I feel I'm trying to, I guess, model that in my own life. I love it. I love it. I've not heard that. Your equation. I'm going to steal it. I'm going to steal it. But yeah, I, I like, it. like it. It's the first but, time I've asked you. I've been working on it. I because I've, I've asked myself that exact thing. Like why are why are people and I've, I've got little. I love listening to different things, and I I, I was listening to Sam Ovens. I don't know if you know Sam Ovens. Hey, Sam Ovens, yeah. Yep. Kiwi lad, very red brain, kind of bit geeky. Um, but I love the way he thinks. He's a very like very laser focused person. So um I got bits out of when he was talking around what the best in business do. And then I was thinking about sport and stuff, and I was like, actually, it's the exact same. I was having a chat with a uh with our CFO, actually, funny enough. And we were talking about all these successful people and, and and he actually he he said it to me but this is not about myself i'm actually more wanting to talk about the overall mm-hmm. if you talk who are we talking about vince mcmahon uh, the wwe guy who's made billions and now he's lost it all and he was saying if you stripped all of his money away he's going to go right back there because he just knows how to get it done he just puts potentially this equation together maybe with a bit few other different things um and he's just going to be able to get back there and just from talking with you now and just, you know, the fact that you've gone from great rugby career, great buyers agency, I, you know, having an equation like this, it would give yourself that confidence. Bill. Even And I've got the exact same confidence. If I were to lose everything tomorrow, I'd be able to apply the exact same thing and go, it's rock and roll. Let's start this next thing. Well, let's do that. I really like that. I really, really like that. I've not ever heard of it. Um, on, on that, quick question, the energy stuff, you, you, you're quite big still on your fitness and whatnot or... or yeah. yeah 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 no i i i think it's like the fuel right like you think you think some people have more battery cartridges than others you know what i mean and and that's okay but i find the ones who are winning they just got a good supply of, of battery cartridges so you can actually put in the little batteries inside some people are capped at four little triple a batteries and that's it <laughs> totally cool. but then if there's another person same background same you know, income level to start with, but they've got, you know, 20 battery battery cartridges they can keep filling those little, they're going to have more energy at, throughout the day to keep going. So what I find is how do you expose yourself to more battery cartridges? And for me, I think it starts with your health first and foremost. Like there's mental, physical, and I, I think like a spiritual side as well. Mm-hmm. And I feel that, again, the best have all three, and they're constantly thinking how that they can improve each three. So, um, you know, um, physical is obvious, you know, health, sleep. I think it all starts with sleep. That's something I'm really trying to improve now is just sleep. As a mind, as a mind. It, it is, yeah. And, and it is because we're also stri- – like people are high performers, they're strivers, right? And they feel guilty for sometimes taking a break. But any high-performance car needs a pit stop, you know? <laughs> so, I've never seen a V8 race car win Bathurst without taking a few pit stops. It's just, you have to. So I think that's one. Habits, what are your habits? You know, the old quote they say, you know, show me your habits, I'll I'll show you your life, where you're at. So um, big on exercise every morning and I love ice bars and all that sort of stuff. So um, I try try to eat well, meal prep, all that sort of stuff. So that's the physical. And then the mental stuff is like, I'm really into meditation now to try and stay, helps me with my focus, helps me with emotional regulation. Like, um, you know, the the battle of the day, the fires that come with business and being an athlete, the best, again, they're they're just level-headed people. So that's that mental and spiritual. It's like everyone's different. Everyone's got a, I feel it's good to have some sort of higher purpose or a big why or, um, you know, that's going to fuel you. The the bigger your why and the bigger your purpose, the, the more energy you'll have too so um, that's why I think it all starts with with the energy because if that's empty you could have the best processes the best focus the best as I said the the best discipline everything but someone with more energy and more battery cartridges will overtake you I love it I love it 
to our viewers listening, I'm not the only person that is very big on those three things. I'm very big on all of those. So I am. That's yeah. Yeah, very, very big, very big. And you can that's tell, man, like you can just tell it. It's the way you present yourself. It's, you know, you can just tell if someone looks after their health that they're, they're a bit more shot, like vibrant, they're energetic. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. It's an important part. I love it. I love it. Um, Matt, I want to actually touch on, especially this is more for the viewers, right? Um, because we do this every day and we can kind of forget about it. And it, and it's actually the negotiation. So I want to kind yeah. of skip you. I've been watching you from afar um i've actually wanted to get you in front of our guys our, our buyers agents because i i see some of the tips and some of the tricks and you know some of the things you're doing from a negotiation point of view in a really heated market right um and you're dealing with very very different properties to to what we do you know circa yep. 800 to 2 million 2.5 whatever it is um i want you to touch on some things because my, my belief and i was having a chat with my business partner about this uh, a few days ago, right? Because I was talking about podcasts today. And obviously you're dealing in one space, you're dealing in one area, meaning the relationships you're building in that one area is building and building. Yeah. Is, is this tips and is this secret little things, is, is there much to it or is it more just relationship stuff? Yeah, good question. I think it's 80% 80, 80 interpersonal skills, 20% yeah. strategy. Okay. And I think in the 80% is, yeah, building genuine relationships, how to build rapport quickly, tonality, yep, body language. It, literally, I think that's 80% of it. Yep. And the 20% is the little tips and tricks and strategies that you, you can apply to it. But I feel if you reverse that equation where you've got 80% of the tips and tricks, but you're not an approachable approachable person or you've just got a cold energy i think i think that the one with the better energy but less skill will, will win agree agree mm -hmm. um and on top of all of it the fact that obviously you've got a relationship built over time yeah. right i think that's the big one like non-negotiable for anyone who comes onto our team is that you have to you have to you call an eight there's a process you know you want to call the agent then note it down and you make sure you see them face to face and mm. present yourself not and not even talk about real estate just, yep. just get to know them like and add value add value build relationship so that level of rapport is at a as a baseline right so you always find better negotiations with people that you you like and trust i believe of course yep and there's nothing sexy about that right it's just you know, our guys fly out to all these regions across yeah. the country. It's just yeah. work and it's just time and it's actually giving a fuck ultimately. Yeah. And I think a big one as well, I've reflected on it with our team. What what we're all really good at now is we have a saying like, what value are you adding to the agents, Dave? Gotcha. So what do agents find valuable? Well, I'm sure they'd like to know about other sales in the area. Okay. That's a good nice. one. One yeah. little tip is really big i'll voice note an agent say hey mr and mrs agent just letting you know i was just at auction one smith street sold for you know 2.2 .2. just wanted to keep you in the in the loop and they love it because that's quick market feedback they'll probably tell their pipeline buyers like Fuck, how good's matt like matt's just keeping me in the loop for i don't want nothing out of it it's just like i'll keep you in the loop and always always give feedback on on property to agents once you get through whether you buy it or not I think it's always, hey, firstly, acknowledge, hey, thanks for your time, your legend, letting letting us through. Second to that is I'll have some feedback within you with, with you within 24 hours. And then if the buyer doesn't like it, let them know why. Hey, buyer thought the backyard was probably a little bit too small. Um, yep. But my personal opinion, I, I think it's a great property. It's probably priced between that, you know, one five, one seven. Um, but who, who knows where the market's at? Anyways, I just wanted to give you some info to, help your vendor. I love that. I really yeah. like that. Little, little, like it, they're not hard things. Right. But I, I think that's what separates, I guess, here on the Gold Coast, while we're building good traction is this, the agents like, like it's, we're not a pain to work with. And I think there's more and more buyers agents. And if any buyers agents are listening to this, focus heavily on building just genuine relationships, adding value back to these key stakeholders. And it's it's also 
I mean, and I see this in your content. I see this in your business. It's 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 actually a mindset of just giving first. Overall, yeah. you're just yeah. giving first before actually without, you know, the the thought of am I going to get something back here? So, mm. I think that's a really really nice way. I mean, to ultimately run life, right? Don't worry about business, but just to run life. I think that yeah. comes back to spades. That's excellent. That's it, excellent. It is, yeah. No, you told the old Gary V and. I was in a lot of hormozy and he actually flips it now. He just says, it's just give, give, give and keep giving. Until, <laughs> until they ask. Until, yeah, until they ask. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly I right. He's, he's the man, Alex Hormozy. Um, can I ask you, Matt, where do you say, obviously you deal with a whole bunch of clients and then you obviously you know don't work with a lot of clients and maybe they come back to you or maybe they never work with you, right? Where do you see a lot of people going wrong on their own? I'm not talking about when they're working with you. I'm talking about on their own and specifically around negotiation. I think the key thing I've identified where people can get it wrong in negotiation is coming into the negotiation, having the mindset of it's me versus the agent and vendor. Rather, I always apply the mindset of it's me working with agent, working with the vendor, working with my client. Like we're all working together yeah so when you come in firstly with that mindset you know your tonality and, and your language is different it's it's more of a hey how can we how can we work together like just so i can understand where your vendor is at is there any terms i can trim up for you that your vendor needs like do they need something long or short like let me know so i can help you so you can see that different to hey what's your vendor What's your vendor want? Like my my guys want thirty days. Can you can you do that? I don't know. Just a little bit of like I like the first guy because he was he was a bit more like wants to work with me here. So I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna do my best. So I think that's number one. Coming into it with the wrong mindset of us versus them. Rather, how can we work together? And then second to that is now you've got that applied mindset. I feel now it's like. What questions should I be asking to understand what they need? So you've got the mindset of like, hey, I need to help them. But then you need to actually know what they want. So a like, yep. really easy one that I always tell people is terms. Like get your terms right. Like it's, sometimes it's not all about price. It's about terms. Like we bought two properties last week and both of them were, one was a divorce and one was an elderly lady. The divorce needed 30 days. The elderly lady needed like 120 days. So um, you know what I mean? So it's understanding what do they need? Where are they at in life? Like, because I can try and go back on my side and, and have some empathy for the whole, everyone involved, and then it's going to be a great outcome. Yep. Yep. I love it. Questions? Questions, yeah. And an actual team. I love it. Yeah. And again, for the, for, for the listeners and the viewers, nothing sexy. There's nothing sexy about this. It's not. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's plain, simple stuff. Obviously, it's very, very easy for, you know, yourself and myself who do it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. But, yeah, there's nothing sexy about it. I love it. Um, dude, I've, I, I just want to now kind of, again, another bit of a shift. And, and we're coming up to, to 30 minutes, so I'm going to let you go on your, your merry way and get stuck into the day. But No stress, man. What is it that you that you are building? Like when, when I guess, let's talk 10 years or 15 years or 20 years down the track, what do you want to look back at with Trauma Group and go, this is... I created this. I, I did this. But what is it that you're building? Yeah, look, it, I always say to myself, I like to vision forward, but I don't like to vision too far forward either because sometimes what I feel is, well, and what I've observed just in life, it's it's anything can pop up. Like, for instance, the I relate that back to my footy career where I thought I'd be playing till 35, like literally, like believed it, and it didn't work out. So... I have a different mindset now where I've got vision, but I'm also, I, I understand the journey is going to take you left, right, everywhere. And there's things you can and can't control, right? So in terms of where I see the company, look, at the moment, it's it's all around creating more more impact for the area we're servicing and, and creating a better buyer experience, I think is, is probably at the forefront. Like, I really like the way the team and I are innovating on different processes on like, working with clients, like how their how the onboard experience is, you know, and how I, I want people to go away thinking, hey, they they need a buyer's agent. It's not just a one. It's like, hey, we'd be silly not to use a buyer's agent to help us. So that that's kind of 
that whole, I guess, higher purpose of the Strava group on, on the Gold Coast. And yeah, se- second to that, it's it's more around for, for me personally, like having having options is obviously the, the reason why I started a company too. Like I, I'm still a property investor in my personal life. So everything leverages each other. So I really want to, I think I'll be doing this for a long time, but yeah, I'm, I'm starting to really enjoy impacting other buyers agents. So for me, I think over the next, you know, could be three to five years, I really feel there's going to be avenues where, yeah, I want to be applying what I've learned now as a, as a buyer's agent to help other buyer's agents because I do believe in the industry and I do believe it's got legs for, for a long, long time. I love it. Again, the underlying, you know, feel of that answer is giving. It's just about giving. And you can you can clearly tell that the mindset that you have is, is, is about giving. Sure, there's obviously, you know, you want to build – future yourself and invest and whatnot but overarching it is about giving which is um i don't know if that's maybe one of your equations there but potentially we could yeah, well, oh one of my favorite quotes is that uh, more impact leads to more income yeah so yeah. focus on the impact not the income income's a byproduct of the impact you make so i 110 percent agree mate yeah uh, agree. some people got got it around the wrong way where they focus on the income forget about the where the impact's going so that's um that's one that's always definitely stuck with me absolutely absolutely final question for you mate rugby or the buyer's agency business now that you've run which which one actually fills you up oh cup not fills you up fills your cup good question look i'll tell you what my body feels better now that's (laughs) so that's my cup's not empty with injuries so that's that's probably positive i think i think for the stage i'm at in life business probably fills fills me up now because i always put it like life is like yeah you just you get wise you get older you you, like i'm a completely different person to when i was 10 years ago playing professional sports Um, but you asked me that question 10 years ago i would have said professional sport fills out because you know my identity was wrapped in you know uh, performing competing getting it over the other player or team you know, fans knowing your name, that really filled your cup then, but that doesn't bother me at all now. So I guess the answer to answer your question is that what's filling my cup now and who, who the person I am now, it's probably, yeah, what I'm, what I'm doing. And will it continue to fill, fulfill my cup in, in the next five, 10 years? Who, who knows? But I feel like life is all around. It changes, it chops and changes. So you just got to be okay that, um yeah who, who knows what's a, what's around the corner yep and you mentioned something before about when one door opens that's the time yeah. it's been open so I, I agree awesome um mate i've thoroughly enjoyed this chat i think we've got a whole bunch of uh, equations that i'm going to present to the team i genuinely will because i really like that but i want to just yeah thank you again for for coming on call notes on here for our viewers uh matt's matt's information about himself his business will all be on there um, but I'm excited to launch this. And again, thank you very, very much for jumping on, my friend. No, nah, thank, thank you. And keep um, keep crushing it, my man. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be down in Melbourne sometime this year, so it'll be good to link up. Absolutely. Thank you again.